From a young age, my parents taught me to be self-sufficient. They reminded me that they weren't going to be around forever, and when they were gone, they wouldn't have many material things to leave me. Throughout their lives, they had many people become dependent on them, and they didn't want that to become me. They told me that although we wouldn't be able to give you many material things when we're gone, what we can do while we're here is provide you with good values and a strong education. So beyond anything else in our household, that became the main ideology. Work hard now so that you can play later. I would do projects before I watched TV. I would do my homework before I went outside. Eventually, there wasn't much time for later because there was so much work. Work was no longer a foreign concept to me. I expected it and learned to appreciate it. By the time I was in third grade, I was looking for a college to aspire to. I was a goal-oriented person. With no goal, I had no purpose. One day, I was gifted the DVD of the movie Iron Man, and I was infatuated. No longer was I a normal 10-year-old boy, but rather one who aspired to be a superhero, a person who could change the world with their imagination and intellect. As a naive child, I asked my parents, how do I become Iron Man? Of course, they replied to me, go to school. Being a little kid, I took it literally, and so I searched. Where did Iron Man go to school? And the answer was MIT. Later that year, I decided to beg my parents to visit the campus of MIT. And when I got there, I was shocked. It was like Hogwarts, every corridor a new place to learn to become a wizard. And so to commemorate this visit to the wizarding world, I bought a flag that said MIT on it and hung it on the wall behind me, right next to my bed. So every day when I woke up, I would stare at my goal and every night before I went to bed, I would see it just before I closed my eyes. My point is education has been a big goal of mine for a very long time. Almost everything when it came to school was a decision made to help push forward my interests. And that right there is the key. Your academics, your statistics, everything that you do in school should push forward your interest. You shouldn't be thinking about, oh, oh, I have to get this perfect GPA or all of that. You want to try your very best to push forward your interest. And I guarantee you that will make the biggest difference. So before I go any further, let me just give you my stats since that's probably why you came here. So here they are. I was the valedictorian and class president of my class. I also graduated with my high school diploma and an associate's degree in liberal arts and sciences. Furthermore, I am a national merit scholar and I help tutor non-traditional college students on the weekends. Now, <laughs> I don't wanna be that guy who's like, my stats aren't that good. In an effort to avoid any kind of criticism of people who did less and still got into a great college. So I'm not, well, I guess I kind of did already, but but that's not my point. I, I'm not gonna say that. But if you did less than me and you still got into a great college, I'm not really sure why you're watching this, but congratulations to you. And for those of you who are thinking, well, if I could have done less and still made it in, I know, I know. Stupid. But I just wanna make it crystal clear that this is just my perspective. Each part of the puzzle of the college application process builds to make a full picture. And since the college is a holistic process and looks at every part of you, this just happens to be the puzzle piece that fit best for me. That doesn't mean that this puzzle piece, if you had the exact same one as me, will work for you. So don't try and think that, oh, I did exactly what I did or a little bit less or a little bit more is gonna change if you're going to make it. There are a series of factors that do have a huge impact on the college application process. But if you're still worried that I don't know if I'm going to make it to a college that I want to go to and you're looking at my stats right now and it's making you a little bit nervous, I would like to give you a little bit of my perspective. Stats are both the most important and the least important part of the college application process. They're the least important because if you're a junior or a senior in high school right now, I'm sorry to say, but it's going to be quite difficult for you to change your statistics now. And that's okay. You see, statistics are not a key to success in the college application process. I like to think of it more like a stool, I guess. Think of it like this. If you're at a grocery store or somewhere where there's a bunch of shelves, and instead of having cereal on it, like Lucky Charms or Frosted Flakes, we have our colleges that we want to go to. If you have a stool, the better the stool, the taller the stool, 
the easier it is to reach the college that you want on the top shelf. If you have a smaller stool, it's a little bit more difficult. But the key here is that no stool is necessary if you're, able, if you're tall enough or if you're able to jump high enough. So keep that in mind. Although your academics and things like that are important as a stepping stone to allow you to reach those higher level schools, they're not the end all be all of the application process. If you can make up for it in other, I'd say more important parts of the application, then you'll be able to still reach the things that you want to reach. You see, the thing about statistics are that they can be important. Schools like MIT look at the academic rigor of a student, and that's a huge deciding factor. And so for schools like that, you want to be able to give them something that they can appreciate. Also, if you have strong academics or you do academic extracurriculars and things like that, it will make it easier for you to write essays for colleges like Harvard who ask about intellectual activities that you do in the college application process. And I can discuss that more in the essay section, but it is important that you do have strong academics, but it's not the most important if you can't change it anymore. Now for other colleges, good statistics is a good bargaining chip to help you get in, but there aren't as essential as for some other colleges like MIT as I So said. to break down the academics and statistics section, let's break it down into a couple parts. The first thing I want to mention is that you want to make sure that you are falling within the 50 plus percentile of the college that you're applying to. This makes it a fairly good reference and a fairly good idea of which colleges are a good choice for you to select. By being in the 50 plus percentile, that means that you're a Above the average scores and the above average grades and that means that you're probably a better applicant to get into a college. The second thing I want to talk about is having increasing difficulty. Colleges want to see that you are pushing yourself. It's not good enough just to take the same courses every year. If you're an honor student every single year, sure that's great, but to show the colleges that you're taking APs and taking more APs every year shows up that you're pushing yourself to go forward. And that should be representative of how you will act in their school. They don't want a person who's gonna be stagnant and taking the easiest classes every year to try and achieve their diploma. What they do want you to do is to push yourself and really grasp the concepts of the career that you're going for because that makes you a better student. It also demonstrates that you're capable of dealing with pressure. They don't want a student that's gonna crack under pressure when the college workload is far more difficult than the high school workload. My third point that I wanna talk about is that it's more important what classes you take and the academics that you do outside of school. Because colleges like Ivy Leagues and those higher elite colleges already have hundreds of thousands of applicants every year who have fantastic stats. But what makes you stand out? They're looking at all these applications. There are hundreds of them every day. They see oh, A plus, A plus, A plus, whatever the grades are. Maybe they see 1600s on the SAT. These are great stats. So how do they choose who gets in and who gets out? Because only a few people can get in. And this is where interest and, and passion comes in, like I was talking about in the beginning. You want to take classes that you're interested in. This shows that you are passionate about your subject. When you come to their school, you're going to be passionate about your course and it's gonna push you to work harder in that course area and therefore probably be more successful in your final career. Also, taking academic courses or something academic outside of school, like taking extra classes or tutoring or something like that, shows colleges that you're willing to take the extra step. This is really important. Everyone else is just going to do what's normal in school, but you, you take the extra step and that's a differentiating factor and you want to be different from everyone else. If you're just like everyone else, then there's no reason to select you to come to their school. Just taking classes that you love, even if it brings down your GPA, sets you apart from other people. Taking theater class for all four years, even though another class could have brought your GPA up, shows them that you're passionate about something and that you're working towards a goal. Your academics aren't made to brag about yourself, but rather to show the colleges who you are as a person. We do these college applications to show colleges if we're the type of person that they want on their campus. Colleges teach us the skill to make money in the hopes that maybe the money will come back to them someday. Think of college like a poker game. If you have good academics, then you're a good hand right off the bat. Maybe you have a flush. So colleges see that as a good investment. They're gonna put some money in knowing that they're likely going to win that bet. However, if you don't have great academics, then you're not such a great bet. Maybe you're not, they're not sure whether there's gonna be a good card at the end that will give them the royal flush that they need to win. And so they're investing in you with the hope that you're going to be a slightly more risky candidate and will reap the rewards that they're hoping for and give them more money than they expected. And so 
if you are able to convey that you are a person who is going to do something revolutionary, do something that's really interesting, then you have a strong chance. And that can be shown through other parts of, the, of your application, like your essays or your extracurriculars. But at least for statistics, know that having better statistics gives you a better bet. If you are able to portray that although you're a risky candidate, you're still going to be a good investment, then you could possibly make it to basically any college that you apply to. The moral of the story is that if your stats aren't great, then that's okay if you're able to make up for it in other ways. But if your stats aren't great and you don't have great other ways to figure out how to accomplish the goal of making yourself look like a good investment to colleges, then it's gonna be very difficult to make it to colleges that you wanna go to. Remember, colleges think about your circumstances. Although it may seem like everyone on YouTube is a person who is extremely successful and has done crazy amounts of academic things, they still consider things that happen at your school. Whether your school offers AP courses, whether they're offering more advanced levels of stuff, but by taking the best of your ability, what your school has to offer puts you above most other people. Maybe you have to work and so you're not able to take academic courses outside of class, but you still push yourself in the best way possible given your circumstances. Shows colleges that you're willing to put pressure on yourself, you're willing to achieve your goals because you truly are passionate about what you're doing. Pushing yourself and doing well when you push yourself is all that truly matters. Remember, colleges are investing in you with the hope that you will make a name for yourself so that one day when some kid aspires to be you, when they search up your name, they will come up.